For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world, the love that is sacrificial, meant by God for you, and the disease that the Bible says, for the wages of sin is death, for all have sinned and come to short of the glory of God. You need a Savior. The Savior has been met, has been given to you. That Savior is in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. For there is none righteous, no, not one. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Salvation can be only met by God's Son, for Jesus is God, and God is Jesus. Acts 20:28. 20, the blood that Christ shed upon the cross was God's blood, God's atonement. Reading now the book of Jeremiah to the nation of Judah, which fell twice in their lifetime because of sin, because of disobedience, of rejecting what God has said, rejecting what God has ordered. And the nation of Israel today, though they are still God's people, even though God still loves them, even though God will give them a new heart, and a new spirit. The Bible says pray for Israel, pray for Jerusalem. The condition that was met in Judah are the conditions that are being met today in America. And if God pronounced judgment upon Judah by taking away the temple twice by the Babylonians and by the uh, Romans and Titus in 70 AD, if God pronounces judgment upon his people, what do you think he'll do to a nation that rejects him? Death shall be chosen rather than life by all the residue of them that remain of this evil family, which remain in all the places whether I have driven them, saith the Lord of hosts. There's coming a time after the Lord takes away his people, the church called the rapture. You've seen the stupid movies out there. There's coming a time of seven years of Jacob's trouble. There's coming a time for Jacob, for the nation of Israel, not for Gentiles. There's coming a time that when death will be looked for, death will be sought. And you will not be able to die. You will not be able to go to the graveyard. For God will keep you alive in torment. God will keep you alive for torture. Because you have rejected what God has offered for you. I'm here to tell you that God is coming and he's coming soon. When I do not know. But behold the day of salvation. Today is the day that you may be saved. Today is the day the opportunity is for you to trust on Jesus Christ. Today is the day that you can put your heart into righteousness and your mouth confession made unto salvation. Today is the day that you can come to Calvary's cross where life begins. Life, eternal life, unable to perish anymore, life begins at the foot of the cross upon Calvary where Christ died for your sins. That's where life begins. You celebrate your birthdays, yet the Bible says you need to be born again. Job says, in, I mean, uh, when the prophets say, David says, in sin did my mother conceive me. You are born unto sin. You are born after Adam's nature who sinned against God. You are a sinner, and the Bible says the wages of sin is death. That is why you're going to die. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish. You're going to die. You can't escape death. But after death, the Bible speaks of as a afterlife. 
that afterlife, that living after you die is either in hell or it's in heaven. There's no other place. There's, other, there's no other circumstances. Why would you trust in a religion that as soon as you die, you came back as something else to live this miserable, wicked, and tortured life all over again and coming back as a cockroach or something? There are people who believe that upon death, it's just a slow sleep, that nothing ever happens, then why is the medical, why is the insurance business out there making multi-billion dollars? If, if life is just ends and that's it, just go ahead. Take on death. But the Bible proclaims that there is a heaven or there is a hell after life, after death. And then after death, the Bible proclaims, and I've stepped out of Jeremiah, but after, the Bible, after death, the Bible proclaims that there is heaven or there is hell. Jesus Christ, about 2,000 years ago, left glory, left the eternal throne, left everything of riches. He was rich, yet he became poor. He came down, was born of a virgin. We all know the story, I hope. Though it's dying down with Patch the Pirate and magic shows and all kinds of junk in the churches. But there was a time when a virgin conceived a baby in Bethlehem. That baby, the Lord Jesus Christ, 48 prophecies concerning that baby before he was even born. And yet two prophecies already met when he was born, being in Bethlehem and his mother a virgin. That baby being born for the sole purpose to die upon Calvary's cross with your name attached. Christ came to die upon the cross and Jesus Christ knew the date, the year, and the time He would die. Even we don't even know our time of death. We can't even fathom. There are people out there who have been pronounced dead yet has not died, are still living. And yet Jesus Christ knew that before He was born, before He came to be sent by the Father, He knew exactly when He was going to die. And knowing exactly when He's going to die, knowing all, and the Scriptures say, in Isaiah 53, being said of a child before he was born, the Son of God, which take away the sin of the world. It is said about the Lord Jesus Christ, who has believed our report. Well, as far as I can see here, they don't the farmer market, no one. To whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? To all of you today, right now, all of you that can hear my loud voice. Everyone that hears this loud, angry voice, the Lord's arm is reaching out to you for salvation. For he, the Lord Jesus Christ, shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of dry ground, no life. Christ came to this earth where there is just dried up death. We are born to die, and what we do between that is a little dash on a gravestone. That little dash falling upon a gravestone, 
you will give an account to God one day. What you do, what you think, what you see, what you say, what you hear, what you touch, what you taste, what you smoke, what you pop, everything you do in that dash of life upon a gravestone will be judged by the righteous and holy judge of all the earth. And believe the Bible says he will do right. It will be righteous judgment. And in that dash upon a gravestone, you have had better. Well, let me tell you what Jesus says in John 3, 3 about that dash. Ye must be born again. In order to get into heaven, your tombstone must read to You need to be born again. That dash upon the tombstone must meet a mother's birth of water, John 3. If you are born of a woman, you are born of sin. If you are born of a woman, you will die. If you are born of a woman, this message is for you. And if you born, if you are born of a woman without the second birth, you will die and you will go into hell. And that death date that they put on that stone will mark the time that you entered into the gates of hell. The rich man was buried and in hell he lifted up his eyes. You say, preacher, I don't want to go to hell. Can I get money? Not of works, least any man should boast. But preacher, what about if I go to church? Not of works, least any man boast. I'm a good person, preacher. There is none good, no, not one. You can't do anything to enter into the gates of heaven. You are born to die, and if you die without Christ, you end up in hell. Well, what must I do to be saved? I'm glad you asked that. Because Acts 16.31 says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. In that dash upon your tombstone, you need a second birth recorded of the Spirit of God that you have believed, you have trusted, you have set your payments upon the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Being called, being born again. If you're born once, you die twice. Revelation 20. If you're born twice, you die once. Yeah, but even in that death, Paul speaks about being absent from the body and present with the Lord. It's not even really death. You close your eyes to this life and you wake up before the Lord Jesus Christ forever who loves you, who cares about you, who came down. Isaiah 53. He has no form nor comeliness that when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Jesus Christ, his picture would not be popular upon your magazines at the cashier stand at your grocery.
grocery store. His face would not hang beautiful upon an art museum. As a matter of fact, if you saw the true picture of Jesus Christ, you would say, according to the Bible, he looks like a Jew. And that is what Jesus was. He is not the picture that Michael D'Angelo preached about, uh, pre preached about. He is not the person that you see in Hollywood. Those are a Gentile Jesus. And Paul tells us if you believe in another Jesus, you are in false doctrine. For the Bible says that there is another Jesus, and if you want to see the other Jesus, go over to the Roman Catholic Church and you will see the other Jesus portrayed with paint. If you want to see the other Jesus in America, go to a video store and rent one of those movies for any movie about Jesus, and you will see a Gentile Jesus, which is not according to the Bible, even if it's a Baptist church movie. And yet the Bible tells us a perfect description of what Jesus will look like, and yet you can't even fathom. If Jesus Christ stood right here in front of me, I bow my knees, if Jesus Christ stood right here in front of you folks right now and preached like he preached, you would be yelling out, Crucify him! Crucify him! Get rid of him! And that's exactly what Israel did for him. When Jesus' 33 and a half years were up, his people cried out, Give him capital punishment. Do away with him. And you would do the same thing. Don't even think holy in and now. You would look upon the real Jesus in your sinful condition, who you are, and say, Ew, that's him. But it's not the beauty. Proverbs 31 says about the virtuous woman, her beauty is vain, but her that she that trusteth in the Lord. Beauty can be ruined by a motor vehicle accident, yet faith cannot. Beauty can be, can be marred by the flames of fire, and yet your desire and your blessed hope of the Lord Jesus Christ May not. Some of you are looking for a Jesus, a Savior, that is not the Jesus of the Bible. Let me explain myself. Jesus is not a cookie and a drink. Jeremiah preaches against that and calls it the worship of the mother and queen of heaven. Have you heard that before? There's a Jesus that people believe that is not God. And yet the Bible proclaims, Jesus proclaims himself to be God. It's very important that you have the biblical Jesus and rely on salvation. Because if you've got the wrong Jesus, you've got the wrong salvation. There's a Jesus out there who Satan and himself are brothers. Where do you find that? In the Bible. I find it in man's doctrine. I find it in man's tradition, but I do not find it in the Bible. And a Jesus that is brothers with Lucifer is the wrong Jesus. And if you have believed on any and all the faults another Jesus is in your dash of life upon your tombstone, you will wake up in hell. And you will cry out to Jesus after your death day upon the judgment, but Lord, didn't I? And Jesus will pronounce to you, depart from me, I never knew you. But Jesus, I watched 
this movie and I saw you and I trusted in you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. You may have believed in the Jesus on the screen, but is it the Jesus of the Bible? See, Isaiah 53, verse 2 says, Get your eyes off the physical and get your eyes on the spiritual. That is what faith is. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The biblical salvation Son of God, Jesus, in the Bible is someone that I never seen. And if I told you I've seen Jesus in a dream, I've seen Jesus at the foot of my bed, I've seen Jesus in my morning toes, I've seen Jesus in my fruit loops, I would be lying to you after the manner of Lucifer, John 8, 44. Jesus says, I will stand at the door and knock and I will sup with you. Jesus never said, I will be your breakfast food. There's a strange doctrine where Jesus becomes food that's not in the Bible. The salvation of Jesus Christ in the Bible is someone you have not seen. And when you do see him, he's going to blow your eyeballs out. He's going to blow your flesh out. That God has to give you a new body. And yet the Bible says still that Jesus Christ bears in his body the scars, the marks of the nails and of the spear that he died for you. Are those upon the paintings of the pictures of supposedly Jesus? Because my Jesus, when I see him, will be marked. He will be marked by the love that he had for me upon Calvary. The mark of the nails in the spear. And when he reaches those hands out to me, that show me how much he loved me. That he died for me. He gave his life. He was born to die for my sins. Or I am born just to die in my sins. He is born that I may be born again. He died that I may have life. He arose from the grave that I may have victory over death. For the gospel is Christ died for our sins. He was buried according to scriptures. And he arose again the third day according to scriptures, and that is the gospel account by the scriptures. And Isaiah 53 tells you, he's not handsome. He is not somebody you would desire by looks. He is despised and rejected of men. He is despised and rejected of men. Every one of you that are in that farmer's market right now, raise your hand. Because that is you. We come, or we try to come week after week after week proclaiming the gospel, and yet you despise, and yet you reject week after week after week the atonement that God has shed out for you. We tell you 